Hi folks, welcome back to the Sty Shack. Okay, Sty Story Time. This one is called 300 Pound Sleeping Bag. Now your imaginations might just run wild on this one. What in the world would Sty be talking about that had to do with a 300 pound sleeping bag? And what does he mean by it? Well, <laughs> here we go. Okay, when I first moved my family out west up to northwestern Montana, I had said in an earlier video, Westward the Wagons, that, um, in fact, I might... I just might um, put that video up in the corner at the end of this one for folks to jump back and watch. But when we got out there, when we first got out there, we moved on to a piece of property that had no improvements whatsoever. It had a driveway, per se, that went into it, into the property. It had a small little meadow as you access the property and then as you went in there was like a logging road that wound up and it came out on a flat like a little plateau and there was a fairly good sized meadow up there on that plateau well that's where we went was up on that little plateau and we surrounded our campers in a big circle and we established our camp so we got five campers up there we had a big um i believe it was 20 by 40 military surplus tent we put that big tent up we had a semi-trailer that had all of our belongings in it that we couldn't haul in our vehicles and our campers along with other equipment like we had a sawmill in that semi-trailer we had a big diesel generator in that semi-trailer everything that we needed was in that trailer and we got camp set up everybody was getting kind of settled in getting all settled in and there are stories galore about that camp um, in fact I'll be doing another one probably today <laughs> but after being there for a while now we moved out there in the summer and it was hot it was just extremely hot and one of the families they had these sleeping bags very high-end sleeping bags very expensive sleeping bags and they were rated for like 20 below zero they you couldn't beat the comfort in those sleeping bags they were just so cushy and comfortable but you sure couldn't use them in the summer. Uh, they were rated for sub-zero weather. But they used them as like bed covers during the summer. Well, after a few weeks or so of people sleeping on those and sweating on those, the gals in camp decided, well, we'll help this other gal wash her sleeping bags. Well, they took those sleeping bags down to our creek. We had a creek that ran through the property. It was a good sized creek too. It was probably 15 feet across and flowing pretty good. But we had one spot that there was a nice big pool and we'd go swimming in there and hang out there. It was great. Well, they thought they'd take those sleeping bags down to that swimming hole and wash them. Well, they got them down there and they had all the kids with them and all the gals thought, boy, we got a project today, we're gonna wash sleeping bags. 
Well, they got those sleeping bags down there and they threw them in that pool. And they floated. I mean, they floated. They floated just like an air mattress. The kids were laying on them and floating. They're not even getting wet because the sleeping bag is floating that much off of the surface of the water. So they thought that was pretty interesting that a sleeping bag would do that, you know. Well, they didn't really think it through. They should have just real quickly washed the surface of the sleeping bag, got it out of that crack, and let it air dry. <coughs> Instead, the gals and the kids, they're all piling on each sleeping bag and they're pushing them down under the water until the water finally saturates the shell of the sleeping bag into the down material that's in it. Now I don't know what kind of fiber down was in it. It wasn't feather down. Finally they got those four sleeping bags. There was four of them. They got four sleeping bags fully submersed. And there's, now they're happy. Now we can really wash them. So they start trying to pick those sleeping bags up to wash them. And they're going, oh my gosh, these things are heavy. We can't move them. And us guys, we were out doing other work, and we come into camp, and the gals come up, and they heard that we heard us pull in, and they come up and they go, hey guys, we need your help. And we said, well, what's, what's the problem? They said, well, we got four sleeping bags down by the creek that we we're washing, and we can't get them out of the creek. They're too heavy to bring up here to dry. And they asked if we'd be willing to carry them up here for them. And we said, yeah, sure. We didn't mind getting wet. It was hotter than the, than the Dickens out, so we thought, yeah, we'll go down and do that. So we get down to the creek, and here's these four sleeping bags, submerged. Now they were nice looking too. They were in a good camo, pattern. Oh, they're really nice looking. Um, but they're underwater. Well, one of the guys grabbed one end of the sleeping bag and he got it out of the water about a foot. And he said, that's all I can do. He says, what in the world is going on here? So I grabbed one and I started picking up. My gosh, when it's in the water, you can get it to the surface. Once you clear the surface, that sleeping bag was so dang heavy, there was no way in heck I could pick it up. I, I finally, I got to the center of the sleeping bag and I got kind of under it with my shoulder. And I tried to stand up. It took everything out of me to get that sleeping bag about two thirds of the way out of the water. And then I had to just let it go back in the water. Now we put two guys on each sleeping bag and you talk about grunt to carry that bugger. Now at that time we we're all pretty young bucks and we, we knew what a hundred pounds felt like to carry a hundred pounds. Each of us, even though there's two on per bag, each of us all agreed that was well over a hundred pounds per man carrying them sleeping bags and we were thinking pretty close to 300 pounds. The fiber in that sleeping bag had absorbed all the water but wasn't letting, it took, the, the gal said it took about an hour for them to finally get those sleeping bags to stay under the water. And we thought it's going to take at least an hour for that water to get back out of those sleeping bags. Fortunately, along the creek, there were some large boulders scattered around. We could, there was no way we could, because there was a kind of a steep trail going up to camp. There's no way that it would have taken all four of us guys 
per sleeping bag to be able to go up that hill with one. There is no way. So we managed to get those four sleeping bags out of that creek and just lay them over these big rocks, these big boulders. We kept going and checking those sleeping bags to see if they were getting light enough to carry. All the rest of that day, right up until dark, we could not carry them up that hill until the following morning. It took that long for that water to come out of those sleeping bags. Now, if you looked at the label on the sleeping bag, what does it say? It says waterproof shield. Now, you would think that'd be the outer shield of the sleeping bag. But I'm telling you, I, it had to have been outer and inner. And just very, very highly water resistant. Very highly water resistant. Because it did allow water in. I'm thinking it let it in through the zipper seams on the sleeping bag, not through the outer shell. So, 300 pound sleeping bag. Well, let's go backpacking with that bugger. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, yeah. You wouldn't make it to the mailbox with that dang thing. Now, when they're bone dry, they were fairly light. They were about four and a half pounds. So that's very light for how big of a sleeping bag they were and how poofy they were. And they rolled up pretty good. You could get the air out of them. And that's, that's what let the water in. If you can squeeze the air out of those sleeping bags, then water can get in wherever that air got out. And that's what it was. It had to have been along the seams that it let that water in. But those gals after that, knew they're not washing no sleeping bags, no how, no way in that creek again. And us guys were very happy for it because just moving those sleeping bags out of the creek, just 10, 12 feet, getting those four sleeping bags out, was more energy burnt than we burnt the whole day working. Yeah. So, <coughs> if you've got a high-end sleeping bag that says that it's got a um, waterproof shell and it's got a thick down interior, don't, don't put it in the water. Don't get it, yeah, just don't do it. Um, and those sleeping bags specifically said on the label too, must be dry cleaned. Well, no kidding, you don't want nothing wet in it. <laughs> well, there you go, the 300 pound sleeping bags. <laughs> There's a side story for you. Thanks for tagging along, folks. If you haven't already, don't forget, click my ugly mug. Over here will be a couple videos. I think I'm gonna put Westward the Wagons up here so that if anybody hasn't seen it, they can jump on there and take a look at Westward the Wagons. And then we'll put a video that kind of suits your pleasures on the bottom. So, until next time, this is Stein North saying, you all have a very nice day. Bye-bye.